In this video, you're about to learn about the instructor. That's right, it's me. So you're gonna learn a lot. And we're gonna use a Q&A format, and some of the juicy questions I'm going to answer are, what is your connection to the deaf community? How did you learn to sign? What is your name sign? What is your education and work history? And why do you create ASL courses and content? So those are the big questions. Let's start with just a few small ones so you can, you know, learn something about me. What is your name? <laughs> Very important. My name is Michael. Nice to meet you. Where did you grow up? I grew up in northern Minnesota, small town, northern Minnesota, lots of woods, lots of lakes, hunting, fishing, sportsman's paradise. How old are you? I'm 43 years old. All right, let's get to our first juicy, important question. What is your connection to the deaf community? Aha, okay, so my younger brother is deaf. He's two years younger than I am. Mm -hmm. My whole family signs. And I grew up in and around the deaf community, yes. So a couple pictures here. That is my brother. That's me, Michael, and my brother, Matthew. And I'm joking with him here about his haircut. He used to wear his hair longer and is real short here. And he's kind of, let's say, anti, well, no, he's just not pro-police. And I used to be a police officer. So I'm joking with him here about his haircut because it's basically how I wore my haircut as a police officer. And many police officers do that. This is my family, so this is me, Michael. My two sisters, Melissa and Roberta. That's Ashley, my brother's wife. She's also deaf, so more signing. Matthew, my brother, my mom, Nancy, my niece, Adrian, and my dad, Frank. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, what is your connection to the deaf community? Well, I would say I grew up with a deaf brother, my whole family signs, and we were active in and around the deaf community. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay, next juicy question. How did you learn to sign? Now you might be thinking, well, Michael, isn't this kind of obvious? You grew up with a deaf brother? And I would say, ha, huh, let's pause for a moment, all right? The statistic is, the statistic is that between 90 and 95% of deaf children are born to hearing families. Uh -huh. However, it's not a guarantee that that hearing family is going to embrace the deafness of that person, all right? Maybe they learn to sign, maybe they don't learn to sign. It's very common for them not to learn to sign at a level that's very high, so you can't have really deep communication. Now, my family, <laughs> we were the exact opposite, all right? So way back when, my mom was like, we are going to embrace this deafness, and we did. We signed like crazy, involved in the deaf community, a deaf section at church, right. Okay, so let's take a blast into the past. You can get a little more peek, a peek into, I guess, my sign language journey and my family's Sign language journey. Here we go. Okay. Back in the 80s. <laughs> okay, so who do we have? We have me and my siblings. That's Roberta. That's Melissa. Baby Matthew right there. And that's me, Michael, down in the front. Let's just say it. Rocking that snowmobile suit. That outfit. I'm ready for action in the snow. <laughs> okay, let's stay focused here. The reason I added this picture is because my brother here, Matthew, at this time in his life, he could still hear, all right? He had not yet lost his hearing, so he wasn't actually born deaf. However, at very young, a little bit before this picture was taken, he became sick with something that's called spinal meningitis. Now, I urge you to look it up if you're curious. Long story short, it is very, very serious. It ravaged my brother's body, and the end result was that he became deaf, right? So, Interesting note about this picture is that my brother is slumped over a little bit. I was asking my mom, could you, you know, give me more information about this time in, in this picture? She's like, well, he was still weak, all right? So he couldn't quite sit up straight because he was still recovering from spinal meningitis just ravaging his body, right? Okay, so we grew up, <laughs> like I said, in Minnesota. My brother and I are canoeing here. We romped around the woods, we played. When we were younger, my brother and I were like this. Building, exploring, climbing trees, going out in the woods, snow caves, uh, tree houses, ha, huh? all right? So this is my brother in the blue, that's me in the green, and we're sitting there on our platform. And the reason I show, I'm showing you this zoomed out picture is because, follow me here, stay with me, I think we need to appreciate the awesomeness of this tree house that my brother and I built. 
So we have an entrance here, we have a platform, we have level number one, level number two, and actually it goes even higher out of the picture. My grandma was pulling her hair out, she's talking to my mom, she's going, how could you let the boys build the treehouse so high? <laughs> Okay, and there is a, a rope here where you can swing over to this platform where my brother and I are sitting right now. So if we zoom in, that's me in the green, my brother in the blue, and I'm signing something with a C. So long ago, I really don't know what we were signing about. But my mom had been sneaking around and take, she took a picture of us at that time. And so thank you, mom, for freezing this moment in time. All right, so we get, we're growing up. We were active in the deaf section at our church. Okay, so I was from a real small town in northern Minnesota, but the church was actually decent size because people would come in from other small towns, we all get together. And the deaf section was also decent size. It always had that chair at the front that was flipped around so that the interpreter could sit there, you know, sign for the deaf section. Now in this picture, our church, multiple times throughout the year, we would get together for like holy days or like big events where there literally would be thousands of people. This is a huge building and there literally thousands of people, churchgoers, right? Wow, when that many people together get together, the deaf section just grows exponentially. So you have lots of interpreters, you have signage, you got family, you got, wow, a ton of people sitting in the deaf section. In this picture, for whatever reason, I don't know why, church services obviously haven't started yet, but I'm sitting in the interpreter's chair. This was a real nice one. They had him raised up because the deaf section was so big. And yeah, my brother's there. He's behind my right arm. I don't know why I'm, why I'm blocking his face, but yeah. So we were in, active in the deaf community. They would have deaf events. They would have deaf uh, talent contests. Yeah, wow, lots of memories, great vibes. All right, when my brother was younger, because he came, became, young very, became deaf very young, he wasn't sent away to a deaf school. All right, so he was about this age, about one, a little bit less than one, when he became deaf. All right, so he wasn't sent away to a deaf school. He was embraced in our family. My mom's like, he's going to stay with the family. We're going to embrace the deafness. We're all going to sign and we're going to be there for your brother. All right. I do remember there was an older fellow named Graydon in our church. Wonderful man. And he shared a story about when he was little, his parents literally dropped him off at the deaf school and they left. You take care of him. Uh huh. That's what happened to him. But in my family, it was the opposite. We embraced my brother. We he was stayed with the family, and actually our local school system, the public school system, actually had a deaf program, and they had interpreters and, interpreters and stuff, so it worked out. Okay, so my mom remarried. That's my dad, Frank. I did want to mention one thing, which is just another life-interesting journey, is that at this time, my mom was single. She had just recently become divorced from my biological father. We're not going to go there. And so she was single with four kids. Now, I'm going to describe my mom as a wonderful bulldog. Because when I think of a bulldog, I think of some something that, they, the bulldog, they grab onto something and they don't let go. So my mom, she grabbed onto sign language and would not let, let go. So she's like, way back when, when life was, wow, what a roller coaster. We're going to learn to sign. We're going to learn to do it really well. <laughs> we're going to sit in the deaf section at church. We're going to be involved. We're going to be in involved in the deaf events, deaf community, and we're going to embrace your brother's deafness and we're going to be there for him. And fast forward to the present, that's exactly what happened. Okay, so once again, this is another picture of my family. That's Roberta, Matthew, Michael, Melissa, my dad, Frank, and my mom, Nancy. All right, a few more pictures. There's my brother and I. Here we are on my parents' deck. That's my mom, dad, my niece, Adrian. Me, Michael, and my brother, Matthew. And we're all looking at my brother, right? And he's signing. So how is it that we're able to understand? Well, my mom freaking pushed us to sign. <laughs> she pushed us like crazy to sign. And as a family, we embraced it. Now, I can remember growing up, <laughs> you know, we have the three hearing siblings and we have one deaf brother. And us three hearing siblings, sometimes, you know, whatever school, life events, we would just be chatting like crazy, but we wouldn't be signing. My mom was not going to have that. She'd give us that look, you know, that look. And she's like, mm, sign, sign. Because my brother would be, keep going like this. Say, say, what are they saying? Say, say. So my mom would give us the look. Sign for your brother. And sure enough, we signed. She pushed us, pushed us, pushed us, and we embraced it. And now we can all sign. Aha. So we went from this 
Fast forward to this. Add in my, my niece Adrian laying across in front, Matthew, Michael, Melissa, Roberta. Mm-hmm. And here's my brother with his daughter and me with my daughter. And this is a few years ago when they were both quite young. Okay, so another added benefit <laughs> to growing up with a deaf brother and having my mom push us like crazy to sign is that sometimes there are things you grow up with which you kind of take for granted because you just do them. We just sign. That's how it is. You just do it. That actually provided me wonderful opportunities because I used sign language in my professions. Aha! Uh -huh. After I graduated from undergraduate, graduate school, and I got into the work world. So I've had multiple jobs, but the main ones, the most serious and of the longest duration were I was a police officer with the Arlington County, Virginia Police Department in Arlington, Virginia, and I was also a federal investigator with the EEOC. It's the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in Chicago. All right. Now, in both of these jobs, in my section, my squad and all the investigators, I was the only one that signed. Aha. So I would have my regular case loaded like the EEOC, or when I was a police officer, you have your regular calls, but I would also get <laughs> the calls to sign, right? When there was a deaf person, some sign, signing situation, whatever. And so I would, you know, get extra work. At the police department, they actually paid me extra for being, being fluent in Spanish and American Sign Language. And it was wonderful. At EEOC, they didn't pay me extra, but in a way they did because it was a fantastic opportunity. I had my regular caseload, then I had the extra there were allegations of discrimination based on disability being deaf. And so I had to do extra work, but also learn extra signs because the technical jargon of a police officer and a federal investigator is very specific. And I need to be able to sign these things to the deaf people that I'm serving, right? That I'm helping out, right? In case you didn't believe me, this is a few pictures. These are a few pictures of me as a police officer in ACPD, Arlington County Police Department, mm -hmm. and some of the people that I worked with. Okay. So when the question was, how did you learn to sign? Well, the really short answer is by just doing it. <laughs> I mean, growing up with my, bro left my younger brother who's deaf, I was a wee little child. He was a wee little child when he became deaf. So growing up with my deaf brother, my whole family signs, my mom pushed us like crazy to sign, and we do, and we, we did, and we do. We were active in the deaf section at, in our church. We were active in deaf, in deaf events and in the deaf community. Right. So just by doing it, signing it, signing it, signing, and it just, it's just part of growing up. It's interesting. It's just what you do. Okay. Next question. What is your name sign? Mm -hmm. Well, my name sign is Michael. So we have an M hand shape and we go here on my forehead for Michael. Now I'll explain to you in a moment how I got that name sign, but first something very important about the deaf community and name signs. My name sign, Michael, is specific to me, as in the only person in the world, me. This is not like the general sign for all Michaels in the world. Uh -huh. So you get a name sign based on the deaf community, the, deaf, the family, the situation, your personality, events at that time in life, and you get assigned a deaf, uh, a name, a name sign, right? So my name sign is Michael, right? Let me share with you the name signs of my siblings. Let's start with Roberta. Her name sign is Roberta, all right? So we have the R handshape for R, which is R for Roberta, and it slides down the cheek. Why? Because the sign for girl slides down the cheek. So this is girl, and for Roberta, we have R, Roberta. Uh-huh. For my sister Melissa, M for Melissa, and we go here on the chin, all right? Because she's cute. <laughs> so she's cute, and she gets M, and she gets Melissa. My brother, he's M, M handshape for Matthew. And go right down here by the heart, Matthew, all right? Because he almost died from spinal meningitis, so he got close down here by the heart. Uh -huh. Now, Michael, that's me, M handshape Michael. I got the handshape, I got this name sign because I was stubborn. <laughs> this is the name sign, this is the sign for stubborn, all right? So up there at the head, you got the M. Michael's kind of stubborn, I still am. <laughs> Okay, so that is how I got my name sign and what it is, Michael. Keep in mind, if you meet a Roberta, Melissa, Michael, or Matthew, and they're deaf, they're going to have a completely different name sign because name signs are individual 
to a specific person in that time in the deaf community, what they were assigned in the family and deaf community. Mm. Okay, next question. What is your education and work history? Well, I talked about it a bit. I'll just briefly repeat. Uh, education is undergraduate degree. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree, ma double major in criminal justice and Spanish. And then I went to the American University in Washington, D.C. for a master's degree in Spanish. And I already told you I used to be a police officer and a federal investigator. Right. Okay, so next question. Why do you create ASL courses and content? Well, we have a ton of ASL courses. And I suppose the short, easy answer is because I really like it. <laughs> I enjoy it. It's really fun. It provides me with a lot of value, but it provides so much more value for the people that it's directed for. The beginning signers, the people who don't know anything, and they jump in and they start signing. Yes. I used to create English courses, and I did that for a while. It was fun. I learned some skills. But it, I was, eventually, it's like, wow, there's so many English courses out there. It's a difficult challenge to compete. Not impossible, but a challenge. So I started thinking, it's like, well, what skills do I have from growing up that maybe other people would appreciate learning? And it's like, hello. <laughs> You take you took it for granted that you grew up signing. Signing, hello, that's your skill, do it. So I create sign language courses. And my goal is to make them so easy and bite-sized, step, step by step, step, that they're just so easy to understand, especially that they're all designed for complete beginners. You have no skills, you jump in, you just start signing and do it. Right. And I have fun. I just, yeah, I really enjoy it. Let's see, content, I also create a lot of content for social media, so go nuts. I think on Abolingo on Instagram, I have over, over 1,200 posts now, 1,200 posts, lots of stuff. You're going to, you'll learn something guaranteed or else you'll practice something, some skill you already have. I also create, we also create books, sign language books on Amazon, where you can kind of have, have puzzles, inspirational quotes, coloring, fun stuff to enrich your sign language journey. And we're also on Etsy right? Digital content, lots of stuff on there, font, PNG files, SVG files, different things, all with an ASL theme, sign language theme. We actually even have some British sign language stuff in there too. Okay, so why do I create ASL courses and content? It's, I, I enjoy it. It's just really fun. I get lots of value from it, and even better, the value that I create, wow, from the feedback that we're getting from our students, who jump in and start signing, it's just, they seem to love it. So I keep creating it. It's just a win-win situation. Good vibes all around. Okay, so in this video, you learned about your instructor. That's me.